Hi everyone, welcome to For the Love of Dogs. I'm Arthur E. Benjamin, founder of American Dog Rescue, and this is Bandit, Bandit my latest rescue. Fair White's on assignment, so Bandit is filling in as my co-host this week. Today, we're dedicating our show to one of the biggest dogs on the planet, the Great Dane, which falls actually into the large breed category, but can weigh just about as much as the giant dog breeds. And that can pose a problem when trying to find a home for such a big dog. Kim Melanson has made it her life mission to help as many Great Danes as she can. Millions. <laughs> Hundreds. Thousands, yep. She started Great Dane Rescue of North Texas, and Kim's here today to tell us more about Great Dane Dog Rescue of North Texas. But before we get started, Kim, can you tell us about this lovely girl who's with you? Yes, this is Aphrodite. Aphrodite, her sister, her mom, and her dad were actually left at a shelter Shelter staff came in and they were, they were in the yard. Uh, Aphrodite and her sister Athena were blind and deaf. They do have some vision and some hearing, but it's still you know, to be determined how much. Athena found her forever home, but Aphrodite is still looking for her perfect forever home that has some Dane experience or large dog experience, as well as some experience with blind or deaf dogs. Well, she poses a problem in terms of placement because you need somebody who has experience with blind or deaf dogs and with a large breed dog. Yes, you know, having a, a large breed is always an extra responsibility because they can be frightening to the public and untrained or ill-mannered dogs are always a problem no matter their size. So with a dog like this, it's important that they get socialized, that there is training. We do training with her with taps and scent signals. Um, she's still learning. It was the first time I ever, uh, you know, there are things like they have to learn where the water bowl is, they have to learn where the door is, where the placement of furniture is, um, on top of things like sit and polite hello and how to walk on a leash. Well, actually, she's an amazing, I'm just going to show this off, she's an amazing little sweetheart. <laughs> and my dog Bandit just loves to play with her. But um, you get help from other shelters in the area. What we kind do. of help and how much help do you get? All, most of our dogs come from area shelters. There was a time, perhaps, when we could take owner surrender dog, but the need is so great in area shelters like Dallas Animal Services and Humane Society in North Texas. Last year, we worked with over 30 different shelters across the North Texas, Oklahoma, Louisiana region, um, pulling dogs from death row. So that is our primary focus, is the dogs in shelters. We do that. Um, a lot of the shelters have rescue and adoption partners who they work with to keep their euthanasia rates down, and that's where we pull most of our dogs from. Now, she may actually have sight in her left eye. It's, we have to wait till she gets a little older before they can tell whether yeah. it's operable or not. Yeah, and as she gets older, um, we are constantly being evaluated by veterinarians, and as she gets older, we'll consistently evaluate. We have been working with her on um, honing what vision she does have by teaching her things like tracking a tennis ball, using things like light and vision, um, using her scent. And she does very well at our home. Um, she's learned how to use the steps up and down. She has signals, um, scent signals for go night night in her kennel for dinner time. And she has a touch and scent signal for sit. What do you mean by a scent signal? We've, I've, you, uh, because in her forever home, I wanted to use commercially available treats. So we use a, a, a US made treat that's commercially available and when I give her the scent she will run to her kennel and go night night. Um, it's just a little piece in her nose and wave it in front of her. Um, if it's dinner time I can just let her smell a little bit of food in my hand and she'll go to her kennel and sit until I put the bowl inside the kennel. Um, so we have different treats for different things. Um, you go outside the state sometimes to find Great Danes, right? We, um, we never have to go find them. They always have a tendency to find us through but the email. you go email outside to pick them up. We have in the past one availability. Uh, if we have the foster space, if we have uh, the financial means to care for a dog and a dog uh, is adoptable, we try to, we have pulled from Oklahoma and as well as Louisiana. How, do you, how many in the course of a year, like in 2013, how many Danes did you handle? Uh, as of right, since we've been around since 2001, and we were actually founded by a group of ladies who came way before me, and they, we have pulled one, over 1,560 dogs um, from area shelters. This last year, 
uh, I believe it was approximately 100 dogs that came in and out of our program. Um, and that are still in our program waiting for Ever Homes. So you have 100 dogs waiting for her for Oh, home. no, they had to come through our program in the course of a year. Right now, we have approximately 15 to 20 dogs looking for Forever and Homes. And how many of those would be special needs dogs? Um, it varies depending, it kind of is what, what comes to us from the shelter right. system. Uh, we have all sorts of dogs. We have dogs that have never had a problem. They were just beautiful animals, and you never know why they came to the shelter. They've never had any special needs. And then we have some, like we're going to see later, Camille, who had some very special needs. Um, it, so it varies depending on what comes to us from the shelter system. How do you afford to treat so many dogs? We are 100% privately don't funded. We receive zero tax dollars um, through merit things like American Dog Rescue and your foundation, we receive money as well as money from private individuals. We have people who donate $5 at a time and we have people who give more, um, some grants and things, but we are 100% pri privately funded. No one, 100% uh, volunteer run, I don't receive a salary. Our other volunteers who you'll see here today do not receive salaries or any monetary contributions. They just get all the dog hair and kisses they can have and slobber. It's great pay. Yeah, not bad if you can get it. Where did your love from, for Danes come from? <laughs> I blame my mom. All problems come from our mom. My mother was not a necessarily dog person. But my we... mother is smaller than your Dane, so <laughs> I could blame her. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, and we had a great Dane that was, I was a horse girl, and we had a great Dane that was abandoned at our barn, and that was my first sort of love for it. Uh, after my husband and I got married, we adopted a dog, a puppy through ASPCA, who turned out to be a Dane mix. And when we moved to Texas, we started volunteering with Great Dane Rescue of North Texas. So is it true that Danes make good apartment kind of dogs? They're so big, but I've heard that, and I don't have that much experience with Danes, but I've heard they make great apartment dogs. They can. They, they are uh, big. They do take up a lot of space, so you have to be willing to share your, your space with them but they tend to be um, lower energy than say a Labrador or a Beagle or another breed. They are a companion animal that you can tell, they just want to be with their people. Now that's a generalization. Some of our dogs would not be such good apartment dogs because they may vocalize a lot um, or they may need more space. So, but generally they make very good apartment dogs because all they want to do is be with their people. How long have uh, Danes been around in this country since the oh, 1700s? I not that's a good question and I'm not entirely sure. I think that they were originally um, bred for uh, combat and I know Napoleon used them in combat. Um, in this country they've been I'm not sure how long they've been on the AKC register um, but they're strictly a companion animal. Do you have a lot of volunteers and foster people working with you? We do we always can use more during the holidays and different periods, we have anywhere between 20 and 30 foster homes. Some of those foster homes are highly specialized to either evaluate or to be medical fosters for um, sick dogs. Um, and some are to evaluate for different things like children or cats. Can you tell us about some of the other dogs that are uh, available? The photos are just amazing. Yes, right now I think I'd like to talk about Zoe. Zoe's been with us for about a year. She is a senior. We have quite a few seniors right now. It's just sort of how it runs sometimes. When she first came to us, if you remember Amy on our, your show previously, right. Amy was a, like shy and shut down and Zoe was very similar to that. And Zoe's just come out of her shell and she's discovered being a dog and she'd be a wonderful addition to anybody's pack. We also have Otis, who's a senior. Um, and then we have some younger dogs. I like to call them the young guns, um, who are a little bit more active and need maybe need a little bit more structure. Um, and then we sort of have everything in the middle. Well, before we run, run out of time, you have a big event, don't you? We have two big events uh, every year. We are going to be kicking off our fundraising season with our Diva Dudes and Danes, which is a dinner and fundraiser. And we usually have a great big event in the fall. But we're going to kick off the year with a smaller event this year in uh, Feb February 22nd at Casa Milagro in Richardson. And that's Diva? Divas, Dudes, and Danes. DDD. DDD. And those are our events that are generally for our two two-footed friends and our uh, volunteers, fosters, and supporters. And it's in a time for us to get together, raise money, and people who all like big dogs. Well, great. We'll have to try and attend. Thank you. 
If you want to help Great Danes here in North Texas, give Kim a call at 817-651-2336. That is 817-651-2336. Or you can visit danerescue.net. They're also on Facebook and Twitter. Coming up later in the show, we're going to meet Camille, who was mentioned, our Rescue of the Week from Great Dane Rescue. We're going to take a short break, but be right back. Bandit, what did you say? You'll match $5 from any child? Okay, it's time to call. Call and Bandit will match $5. See you in a minute. Every year, families in North Texas unknowingly spend hundreds of thousands of dollars in support of neglect, abuse, and disease. When you buy a puppy from a parking lot or flea market, you could be supporting the cruelty of puppy mills that profit from dogs bred in abusive conditions. Help us stop the cycle. To learn how, go to spca.org slash no puppy mills and take the puppy pledge. So I just moved in with this family and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, poop already. You're making me nervous. Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this for his sake. My name is Teresa. This is Scooter. My name is Amber. This is Duke. I'm Dr. Dixon, and this is Annie. I'm Emily. This is Jackson. I'm Kelsey, and this is Skittles. My name is Miko. This is Chloe. My name is Ty. This is Callie. My name is Tamar. This is Simon. My name is Renee. This is Snowball. My name is Dr. Miller. This is Fletcher. My name is Eric. This is Sport. My name is Stacy, and this is Britches. And I'm a pet lover first. And I am a pet lover first. Know what? What? Since I got adopted, I've learned a lot about these humans. Uh, I know. I mean, check out these two. It's Flirt City over here. Yeah, I noticed that. It looks like my human is definitely into your human. Oh, look! I think she's getting his number. Nice. Your human's got some sweet moves. Takes after his dog. <laughs> oh, look, they're doing that thing where they put their arms around each other. She kicked up a leg. It's like in the movies. That's awesome. Looks like we're going to be hanging out a little bit more. Welcome back. You're watching For the Love of Dogs. And as we mentioned in the last segment, the Great Dane is amongst the biggest dogs in the world. You know it can grow to four feet tall and weigh as much as 200 pounds. So here's a little bit more on the Great Dane, courtesy of the Dogs 101 on the YouTube channel. That's Dogs 101 on YouTube. Watch this. Here's a quiz. What's the tallest dog in the world? One of America's favorite cartoon dogs and a dog that was thought to protect people from ghosts. That's right, the Great Dane. They're called like the Apollo of the dog world, and they definitely deserve that name. They're beautiful. Powerful and athletic, yes. But the Great Dane's calm disposition has led the gentle giant to be called world's largest lap dog. I had a client the other day with his Great Dane, I kid you not, sitting on his lap in the waiting room. But the roots of this breed are anything but warm and fuzzy. First of all, they're not really Danish. It's interesting that their name is Great Dane when their origins have nothing to do with Denmark. They're actually a German Mastiff. <laughs> I'm stumped. <laughs> I'm not sure how the name Great Dane came up. While no one really knows how the English name of this dog came to be Great Dane, the breed is part of the Mastiff family. Asiatic tribes likely brought Dane-like dogs to Germany in the 5th century. There's evidence of dogs resembling the Great Dane in ancient Rome, Egypt, and even China. The breed we know today was developed in Germany about 400 years ago. They were bred in Germany to hunt large prey, to patrol estates, and they were even used as war dogs. 
it's a mastiff that's that's mixed with a, a greyhound. I think sometimes people forget that underneath all of that calm is still a very very large guarding dog. <laughs> The breed was also ascribed mystical powers in medieval times and was said to protect against evil spirits. The Great Dane is a magical animal. Run, Caleb. Over the last hundred years, the aggression and prey drive that made the dog such a sought-after hunter have largely been bred out of the breed. Today's Great Danes prefer the couch to combat. They'll lay on the couch, you better have a big bed. They are couch potatoes. The physical characteristics bred into this dog leave no doubt as to its original purpose. Start with great height. It's just a gigantic beast. We're talking about paws that are the size of a man's hand, fully splayed. The Great Dane is one of the tallest dogs, along with the Irish Wolfhound. The Irish Wolfhound is actually, on average, taller than the Great Dane. But a Great Dane named Gibson currently holds the title of world's tallest dog at 42.2 inches. While its cousin, the English Mastiff, is the heaviest dog at 150 pounds or more, the Great Dane is no pushover. In fact, they like to do the pushing. A lot of Danes tend to be leaners. They tend to be like Doberman's dogs who like to step on your feet and kind of lean on you. Most of that height comes from proportionally long legs. As big as they are, they're just so beautiful to see because they're not clumsy. They're very graceful when they move. The head of the Great Dane is unmistakably mastiff-like. The top of the skull is almost exactly parallel to the large snout. This gives the dog a regal appearance. The Great Dane is one of the most varied of all breeds. They can weigh anywhere from 120 to 200 pounds, and there are six coat color varieties. For the most part, they do well almost anywhere, but Danes do need space. This isn't a dog that you cramp into an apartment. This is a dog that needs to stretch its legs out every single day. Its large size makes it critical to train this dog early. The Great Dane is a short-haired dog, so grooming is no sweat. As easy as hosing them off and sponging them down. Unfortunately, health problems abound. This breed has one of the shortest life expectancies of all dogs at seven and a half years. While the legs are often the first to go, Great Danes are prone to a devastating internal disorder. They are the number one breed of dog to get bloat. It's the number one reason why a Great Dane dies and that's unfortunate because you get such a close bond with them. Bloat can occur when a dog with a full stomach engages in heavy activity, like exercise. Great Danes, along with many other breeds, have stomachs that are not attached to the rib cage. During heavy activity, the stomach can flip, blocking the intestinal tract. If not treated immediately, bloat is extremely dangerous. What we need to be doing is making sure that they eat their meal and they rest for a good 40 minutes to an hour before giving them any type of exercise. Despite the health concerns, these dogs fit in well with families. I think kids might tend to think that they could climb all over that dog and you know, ride it like a pony, climb on it when it's laying on the bed, and that's really not a safe thing to do with any dog, and certainly not a dog as large as a Great Dane. Not all dogs adhere to breed standards, but in general, the Great Dane needs space. The breed does not live long. It has lots of health issues. They're easy to groom. They're easy to train, but start early. Train and acclimate them early to children, and they'll be wonderful family dogs. Thanks again to Dogs 101 channel on YouTube. Check it out to see more about your favorite breed. We're gonna take a short break, but when we come back, Camille is here with her family, our Dog of the Week. So don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Cheryl Crow, and I'm a musician and a mother, and this is Buttercup. She's also a mother, but not by choice. She's a survivor of a puppy mill. Buttercup spent her life in a dirty wooden hutch, forced to produce litter after litter. She never went to a veterinarian or a groomer. She never had a soft spot to rest or a kind touch. She existed this way in cruel isolation year after year. 
Puppy mills are mass production factories where mother dogs suffer their entire lives, producing nearly 100% of puppies sold in pet stores and on the internet. When these dogs are no longer able to produce, they are often destroyed. Buttercup's nightmare ended the day Animal Rescue Corps saved her life. She finally knows what it means to have a loving family, but for the millions of dogs suffering in the estimated 15,000 puppy mills across the United States, this nightmare continues. Animal Rescue Corps and I ask you to visit your local shelter or rescue when choosing your next animal companion. You will not only be saving a life, you will be helping put an end to this cruel industry. Please go to AnimalRescueCorps.org to learn more about ending puppy mills. Buttercup and I thank you. So, I got this new family. And I don't know what it is about this one, but she can't seem to put down that toy all day long. Tap, 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 tap. Oh, and she even talks to it. She talks to that more than she talks to him. What's up, bro? Nice shirt. Who's she talking to? Her mom? She talks to her mom a lot. Live with a human for a while, and you get to know a few things. Like, I know she's actually not a morning person. I know she does strange tricks for no treats. I know that water makes her howl like crazy. I even know how the floor stays so clean. She's quick. But the one thing I will never for the life of me know is how she gets so tiny and inside that box. Natalie, how do you get so tiny? So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek. Welcome back. It's time now for our rescue story of the week. It's a success story from Great Dane Rescue of North Texas. About a year ago, Camille here was picked up by Dallas Animal Services and thought to be blind and unable to walk. That's when Great Dane Rescue and Don and Lynn Harden stepped in. All three are here today to tell us what happened next to Camille. Welcome, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Well, what happened next? <laughs> <laughs> well, what happened was we took her in and with our vets uh, started her on a, a series of uh, Promeris, which is a, a, a topical uh, application that uh, works on the mange and a lot, a lot of antibiotics because she was not only mangy but very uh, uh, swollen with secondary infections and it took about three months to get her down to where she looked halfway normal and she's always going to have skin problems uh, we just started her again with some some more primaris to to work on some more mange because it just it'll keep coming back it's a nervous mange more than anything else right now right now if she has something that will really stress her uh, in fact after uh, we got her mange under control. Her eyes are uh, too small for her head, according to our vet. And we actually had a, uh, uh, an eye job done on her so that we could move some of the, <coughs> remove some of the, the skin so that she could see a little better. And when we did that, that just really aggravated it again. So do you know what happened to her? No, we don't. That's, that's the thing with coming from rescue. You really don't know their, their previous story. What we've been told was, you know, she was found by Dallas Animal Control. They were doing a, uh, she actually ran out in front of an animal control officer and he almost hit her because she was having so much problem seeing or anything else. Her face was very, very, very swollen. So what about the not being able to walk? I mean, she can clearly walk. 
she was just in so much pain from the secondary infections. I mean, her front feet and legs were swollen. Everything on her was just really, really swollen with infection. But you took her right in as a foster? Yes. I was uh, working from home, and they called me and asked me if I'd be willing to do it. I've never, with our rescue, I've never worked with a mangy dog. So I was having a whole lot of coaching having to be done with her. but. We took her in because I was going to be home and would be able to, to spend the time with her. Well, let, let's distinguish for the audience. There are two types of mange. One is a communicable mange that would be spread from dog to dog or right. dog to person. This is the non-communicable mange. This is the demodex. And, right. and um, that's done by a test. So they tell you up front so you don't have to worry about the other dog or right. yourself. Right, right. So what happened? How is she today? And can <laughs> she see? Can she play with other dogs, how do they get along? She, she gets along fine with uh, our other dogs. Of course, we've got Ty here. She's, she's very leery of new situations. Uh, when we first got her, she would go out into the backyard just fine, but if she tried to go out to the door, or I tried to get her out of the door into the, the driveway to take her someplace, she wouldn't go. I'd have to almost literally pick her up and carry her to the car. Sounds like a form of post-traumatic stress. I think very much so, very much so. And uh, so, I mean, he, he, here in the studios and everything else, most of the time she's fine, but if, I'm, if I get too far away from Tyson there, then she starts getting nervous and, and a little bit bulky. And we, you have how many other animals? We have three other small dogs. How small? Uh, 20 pounds. So little guys like Bandit. Little guys like no Bandit. No wonder they're so good with Bandit. <laughs> I'm afraid we've run out of time. Don, Lynn, thank you. Uh, thanks so much to Great Dane Dog Rescue of North Texas. That's Great Dane Rescue of North Texas for being here today. Remember to keep up with us on For the Love of Dogs on our website, AmericanDogRescue.org. You can also follow ben Bandit and I on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. For all of us here at For the Love of Dogs, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>